Um, it's not it's not really work to me. It's it's fun. I, I love writing for the Tower Light. I love writing columns. There's so much fun to do. Producing TV shows is fun. Who doesn't want to see themselves on, on TV? I mean, that's just a great feeling. And, you know, radio, radio is always a good time, too. I mean, you know, being able to talk to people and have people listen to what you have to say. And then, of course, being a coach. I mean, I always love sports. I always love basketball. And coaching is just another dream of mine. So none of it feels like work. It's, it's all fun. My goal, my ultimate goal is to be able to do all three. Um, much like a Stephen A. Smith, Michael Wilbon, Tony Kornheiser um, type thing where you can be a columnist for a paper, have a show on ESPN, and still be able to do a radio show on ESPN Radio. I mean, if I could do all three, I would be the happiest man in the world. I'd be, that would be my ultimate goal, my ultimate dream. Um, if I absolutely had to pick one, it changes every single day. And when I answer this question a lot, and it changes every single day. Um, I, right now, today, I'm feeling like newspaper. Tomorrow, I might feel like TV. The day after that, I might feel like radio. I mean, I just it, it just depends. When I signed up for the Tower Light, didn't get a call. They kind of ignored me. So I came back and popped up in the office and started introducing myself to people and asking for stories. And I had to stay on top of them. And finally, you know, it paid off because they eventually gave me rugby, which was a random beat. I covered that. And that's kind of how I got, you know, started in that. And that kind of snowballed and escalated to a point um, to where I am now. And, and the reason I love it and the reason I can stay in it is because to me, I take the criticism as positive because of the fact that I'm, I'm evoking enough emotion in people to make them want to write in and take their time out of their busy schedule to write in and complain about something I wrote or praise something I wrote. And to me, that that's an honor. Like that, That's a privilege to be able to, to move people that much with your writing that they want to respond to you. And I write a lot of controversial articles and I do get a lot of criticism from a lot of different people, but I get a lot of praise too. Um, me being one of the few and right now one of the only black editors on the tower light and that's also difficult but that's something I've learned to cope with and learn to deal with um, so it's just a lot of stuff that you just you know prepares you for life and I, I'm anxious to see what the stuff I'm doing today is going to prepare me for later um, the Bill Belichick one I thought was one of my best ones I've ever written um, the one about Michael Vick and dogfighting compared to hunting um, was also an interesting one I really like that one but I think the one that meant the most to me would have to be the one I wrote about the bias in the media and uh, how you know uh, the the Associated Press uh, did a did a study in which they looked at the major newspapers in America and saw that out of 305 newspapers, major newspapers across America, only four of them had black sports editors. And to me, that's an alarming number because of the fact that um, you look at who who does the most on the on the actual playing field in athletics, and, and it is African Americans. And yet, you have non-African Americans doing the vast majority, and I mean the vast majority, of the writing on them. And a lot of times, it's biased. A lot of times, it stems from different things and different backgrounds. And you know, believe it or not, you're not, you're never going to read something in a paper that's not biased. Um, and I don't care what it is. And to me, you're not getting enough of one side of the bias. You're only getting the other side, and uh, that's not fair. And and I talked about that, and and just how um, there's not enough black sports writers out there to get one to get the, the full side and the full details of the story and to me that was important to me that was big to me um, and I compared it to professors at Towson and how less than two percent of the professors here at Towson are African-American but almost 90 percent of the cafeteria and janitorial staff here are African-American and I just found it odd that Towson could attract so many African-Americans in one side of the field and unable to attract more on the other side and that, that was alarming to me and it also shows again Towson students are going into the world with only one opinion and one side of, of how they view a whole group of people. And to me, that's not going to be fair either. Um, so that was a big concern for mine, and that was probably the one that meant the most to me because as I go out into the sports world, I don't see a lot of black writers out there and black editors who I will be talking to and dealing with. And because of that, some of the things I write, they may not fully understand, and I have to try to explain myself differently and reword things just to fit that. And um, that's just that's something that's probably going to stick with me forever. And that's that, that was probably one of my favorite uh, columns that I wrote.